And before we get too far, if you have a cell phone and you haven't silenced it, please silence it now, which reminds me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did mine. Okay, so <laughs> I had an interesting experience for this meditation I was preparing this week, and the thing I was going to do, it, it just kept feeling clunky, 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 and then I, last night it occurred to me, well, we all know where that idea came from, right, of a better idea, because this feels more appropriate for these times, which is world peace. So today, I want to meditate on world peace, and I hope you will follow along with me. If you have something else you want to meditate on, please feel free. You'll have plenty of quiet time to do that. But um, my reading this morning to uh, bring this into focus is world peace. I see the world abounding in peace and love. The tie that binds humanity is the truth that we are all joined by the divine spirit within us. No worldly circumstance, no conflict, no turmoil can change this. As more and more people awaken to this truth, peace will flourish in every land. I, ho I hold the high watch for world peace uh, by envisioning this growing harmony. I commit to visualizing all the world at peace it's people living from their divine natures. When I encounter troubling situations, I hold this vision of a peaceful world in my mind. I live in the world as it is, even as I work toward bringing peace to my corner of it. I take comfort knowing others are spreading peace just as I am. The world is everyone's to care for and enjoy. Peace is the way. So, Let's take a few breaths and relax. And I like to just massage my face a bit to relax it, which is my forehead, cheeks, knees, chin, and throat. And let's, in this meditation, Envision a peaceful world with growing harmony and hold that. And if you want a mantra, I can suggest one, which is breathe in peace, breathe out harmony. And so let's go into this meditation envisioning a world filled, well, a world of peace and harmony. And we can do this meditation with a slight smile on our face and envision this peaceful world with joy.
as we close out this meditation, I know this is a divinely inspired idea to envision our world of peace and harmony that we see in all the leaders of the international organizations, the leaders, I should say past and upcoming, the leaders past and upcoming of every country in our country, of every state, in our states, every local leader, that what we envision for them is that their divine light grows and glows so brightly that it eliminates any fears they have, for it is fear that leads to conflict. And so we can envision a world where conflicts cease, where good governance is growing, where crops flourish to feed everyone adequately. And what a wonderful world and vision, a vision of the world this would be is. And so I give thanks for this vision. It's a divinely inspired idea. And I release it simply and easy, easily by saying, and so it is. What you gonna do when the war's all over? Sing it from the rooftops, roll in the clover, dance with my children, kiss their mother, go to the graveyard, tell my brother, take a big bite of that peace prospectus, send my medals in a box to Texas, bury my khakis in a hole without me, turn in my last ticket to glory, war, war, I'm giving up war, giving up war forevermore, I'm giving up guts. Giving up glory, giving up a living and a dying story. War, war, I'm giving up war, giving up war forevermore. Why don't you come to? It's gonna be crowded, don't say no. I swear I never have doubted that together we'd be giving up war. What you gonna do when the bells start ringing? Grown men crying, children singing. Radios rocking with the news they're bringing. Grab your partner, come out swinging. Dance around the circle in the middle of the square. Dream about a battle with no one there. Sing it to the stars. Hope awaits us hand in hand. We make a mighty chorus. War, war, I'm giving up war. Giving up war forevermore. I'm giving up guts. Giving up glory, giving up a living and a burned out story. War, war, I'm giving up war, giving up war forevermore. Why don't you come to? It's going to be crowded, don't say no. I swear I never have doubted that together we'd be giving up war. Hey, war, war, I'm giving up war, giving up war forevermore. I'm giving up guts, giving up glory, giving up a living and a dying story. War, war. I'm giving up war, giving up war forevermore. Why don't you come to? It's gonna be crowded, don't say no. I swear I never have doubted that together we'd be giving up a war. Yeah, man. In keeping with peace. Good morning, all. Good to see you.
there's a sacred tune that dwells inside of me. I heard it in the mountains. I heard it by the sea. It calls us all together, the many and the one. It's been around forever and never goes unsung. It's the sum of all that's true, and all I've got to do is raise my voice and sing. Hey, it echoes in the canyons, it whispers in the trees, it fills my heart with gladness, it resonates in me. It's the sound of angels passing, and zephyrs high above, an answer to my asking. For just a little bit of love to help me make it through And all I've got to do is raise my voice and sing sacred tune, so clarion, so clear, resounds across the ages for everyone to hear. Hey, it doesn't need a venue, it doesn't need a band, just open up and then you may come to understand that it's sacred and it's new, and all we've got to do is raise our voice and sing. There's a sacred tune that dwells inside of me. Aye, 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 aye. Do a little old gospel song for you. I kind of refound lately. Gospel fits anywhere. Tempted and tried, we're oft made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While there are others living about us, never molested, low in the wrong. A further about his farther along will understand why cheer up my brothers walk in the sunshine and we'll understand it all by and by Oh. 
often I wonder why I must journey over roads so rugged and steep while there are others living in comfort while with the lost I labor and weep how further along we'll know all about it farther along we'll understand why hey cheer up my brothers live in the sunshine We'll understand it all by and by. When death has come and taken our loved ones on to a home beyond the blue sky where we will meet the dear ones waiting and we'll understand it all by and by cause farther along we'll know all about it and farther along we'll understand why so cheer up my brothers and live in the sunshine and we'll understand it all by and by farther along we'll know all about it farther Cheer up, my brothers, live in the sunshine, and we'll understand it all by and by. We certainly hope so. <laughs> it's nice to see you all again. I've been away for a bit. I was down in Central America and uh, had a, a rather disturbing incident. And in the process of working through it, I had a little white stone that I carried away from this place. Remember that one? And I had written a word on it under direction of letting things go and coming up with a new guiding image. And I had packed that white stone. And it helped me, uh, helped me process what I'd gone through. So I enter this room today with gratitude. Bring the light, bring the light. Let it shine on me. Bring the light, bring the light. Let it shine on me. When it's too dark, gone on too long, things seem too stark, things seem too wrong. Let it go, bro, let it go. Take a knee and bring the light, bring the light. Let it shine on me. Bring the light, bring the light. Let
let it shine on me. Happenstances may befall you. There'll be chances, great and small, to write your story. Hey, it's not over. Wait and see. And bring the light. Bring the light. Let it shine on me. Oh, bring the light. Bring the light. Let it shine on me. Let it shine on me. Let it shine on me. Hey, bring the light. Bring the light and let it shine. All right. Thank you, Don. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living of St. Augustine. I'm Reverend Ken Wilcox, and you're very welcome to be here today. Uh, you know, we are a unique, unique spiritual community. We are a community without dogma. Uh, we don't require you to believe anything. We ask you to come to your own conclusions about your life and about power, about spirit, about God, and how to use that power to bring more love, more joy, more health, and prosperity in your life. So we asked you to come up with a spirit, a God of your understanding, one that you can empower and get out in the world and make a difference. And to help that power show up in your life in a dynamic way, I always ask you to do one simple thing for me each Sunday morning, and that's to leave all your troubles, your fears, your would-haves, your should-haves, your could-haves, to leave all that stuff outside, and for the next 45 minutes or so to open up an avenue of spirit possibilities in your life. And what are spirit possibilities? Well, they're for more love, more joy, more happiness, more laughter, more dance, more music, more food, everything in life that makes us feel alive, that makes us feel alive, because that's what spirit is doing through you and through me, showing up in the physical, recognizing itself through our love, our joy, and our laughter. So know you're in a great place this morning. Spirit is going to recognize and reward you abundantly. So we have several announcements before we get started. The first one is about a wonderful event we have coming up this week. Pat Conover is coming up to tell us about it. Come on up, Pat. We have seats available for the play <laughs> next Saturday with our wonderful actors, Jim Cadigan and Margaret Kaler, playing the parts of Bo and MJ in Lee Weaver's play, The Witness. How many of you have seen The Witness? How many of you are planning to come <laughs> see this version of The Witness? <laughs> this is a fundraiser for CSL, and we have the wonderful Nan Weaver, Lee's widow, flying in on Wednesday. So she'll be here for a week, and she will be here at the play. She's afraid she's going to get kind of emotional. I'd be surprised if she didn't. So we sure hope you can make it and spread the word to friends in the community. Here comes Margaret. <laughs> she's the MJ character. <laughs> um, Lee and Nan came to this church quite a bit. And uh, it was a very special place for them. And, of course, they were wonderful friends of ours. So please plan to come 7 o'clock Saturday to see The Witness. If you'd like to give me your name, I'll be sure to reserve a seat. Thanks. Thank you, Pat. 
Let's see, we also are starting our class this afternoon, right or this morning, right after service at 1130, the Essential Earnest Homes. So if you would like to participate in the class, the books and class notes are outside, and it's by a love offering here in the auditorium at 1130. At 1 o'clock, Silver Fawn, I know who she is, see, she's here today. Uh, there she is. Yay! <laughs> Do you want to come up and tell them about the prayer ties, or you want me to? Okay. Come on, Silver Fawn. <laughs> yes, that's well, right. Sure, <laughs> hey, so um, at 1 today, we will be doing um, a Native American practice called prayer ties that are part of the forgiveness ceremony that's coming up in Elkton on May 2nd and 3rd. And so it's an opportunity to march. <laughs> Ooh, March uh. 2nd and 3rd, thank you. Uh, March 2nd and 3rd out in Elkton. Um, if you make prayer ties here, we can take them out for you if you'd like. Or if you would like to come out and participate, it's open to the public. Very quickly, forgiveness ceremony is an opportunity to address intergenerational trauma, so to um, seek forgiveness for both our um, the people and the generations before us as well as going forward. Um, again, I could spend the whole rest of the hour talking about that, so I'm going to stop here and just say, if you have questions, um, catch me after if you want to know a little more about it, or come at one and enjoy the community and connection. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Silver Fawn. <clears throat> we also have our Venus Manly Scholarship Program going. There's flyers outside. If you can promote, help promote that for us, we'll be greatly uh, appreciative of that. Later on in the year, we're going to have more um, events surrounding the Venus Manly, and we'll, I'll keep you informed of that. We think we may have a play that we're going to do to help support it, fundraise it. I think it's going to be really marvelous, so... Just keep your eyes and ears open for that. The Psychic Fair is coming up March 23rd. If you'd like to volunteer for that, there's a sign-up sheet by the fountain in the lobby. And now we've got our own wonderful Brenda coming up, and we're going to announce new members. Brenda, would you like to come up? Hello. There you go. <laughs> I have two stacks of name tags. This stack, are, I, people have gotten back to me that they can't be here this week because of other commitments. That would be Diana Brummer and uh, Brett, Brent Brummer. And the Ballerat, Ball, I always want to say ballerina, Ballerimo family. Uh, uh, Jerry, the man, Jerry, the son, Joe, the woman, and Andy, another son. <laughs> so anyway, um, th they couldn't be here this week to, to get their name tags, so... They expect to be here next week. So, oh, I don't know. Hopefully, all these people are here. Mike Insalaka. <laughs> Mary Razel. Oh, hey, Mary. Mary. <laughs> okay. Bobby Ray. There she is. <laughs> Ginny Pearson. Bobby. <laughs> oh, Bobby. <laughs> uh, Ginny Pearson. No. Reed is here. Reed Hale. <laughs> uh, Willow K. I don't think I see Willow. Hmm. Okay, Jeff Gustafson. Jeff, are you here? Okay. Jeff. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and Rosemary Delapina. Rosemary, where are you? Okay. Well, these people, the people who aren't here usually are here, but we'll get them next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're so, so glad you're part of our community. Thank you, Brenda. Well, those are all our announcements, so let's have some great music. Don, what, we're, we're, come on up, Don. <laughs> the 
I never really know what I'm going to do when I get up here. Originally, when uh, a friend asked me to come and, and play here, she said, well, just take your lead from Ken. So I, I'm not sure what that means, Ken. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> song called, uh, it actually I, I did, sprang out of coming to this room. me happy, that kind of love just gets me through, the kind of love I only get from you, now when I feel it deep inside me, I know there's nothing I can't do, and that's the kind of love I get from you, you are the answer to whatever troubling me. In time of anger, it's as though my heart were locked, but you got the key. That kind of love just makes me happy. That kind of love just gets me through. The kind of love I only get from you. abandoned and somehow lost my way empty heart and handed then you filled me with your love and I gotta say that kind of love just makes me happy that kind of love just gets me through the kind of love I only get from you <laughs> and when I feel it deep inside me I know there's nothing I can't do and that's the kind of love I get from you. The sunlight that starts my every day. And when the day is done, you're still with me here. And I've got to say, that kind of love just makes me happy. That kind of love just gets me through. The kind of love I only get from you. <laughs> when I feel it deep inside me, I know there's nothing I can't do. And that's the kind of love I get from you. And that's the kind of love I get from you. And that's the kind of love I get from you. <laughs> Wonderful. That was, thanks, Don. So now to get our service going, we're going to do a reading and a treatment, and we've got our own wonderful Brenda coming back up to do it. Come on up, Brenda. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> and good morning to the people who are watching online. So how many of you get the Science of Mind magazine? I'm one for one. I don't know about you, but I was so excited to see the February readings are dedicated to black history. In my time of getting this magazine, I have never seen the magazine devote uh, all the writings to black history. And why do I bring that up? Well, for me, it's 
another way of learning my spirituality and how to traverse my spiritual journey because I can look at black history and learn so many ways that spirit demonstrated through the, our black brothers and sisters throughout the years here in this country. So I'm reading from the February 1st article, which opens up the rest of the month, uh, introduces what the author is going to do, and that is black history is American history. The only difference between a burglar and a settler is who writes the police reports. That's written by Michael Harriet. And Ernest Holmes writes, our horizon is limited to the confines of our own consciousness. So you can put that in the context of what horizons did the oppressors have and what horizons did the oppressed have. It helps us to know and hold in context what it is that black historical figures were getting over. It helps to have a clear context of the time, laws, culture, and power dynamics to better understand what was required for fo black folk to succeed. My research reveals an upward striving based in determination, perseverance, tremendous faith, courage beyond what I have seen or known, unconditional love, open-heartedness, compassion, and empathy. This striving seems the catalyst that drove these historical figures from what they may have what may have been their destiny had they bought into the constraints forced on them. Instead, they nurtured and harvested a larger vision, a healthy sense of self, a divine knowing that something more was possible and ultimately inevitable. And they didn't stop there. They stayed the course and worked to create a way out of no way. This can be instructional for all of us to acknowledge and honor the horrendous circumstances mm, and immense risks. Although many did not make it to the mountaintop, they never gave up, and many thrive. I am blessed to see myself, that's referring, the author is referring to herself, I am blessed to see myself and this teaching the principles we teach and endeavor to practice evidenced through these stories. All sustainable progress depends on us working together toward our collective greater good. Some will be resistant, some will serve and support as allies, some as advocates, and some will step up as co-conspirators committed to doing whatever it takes, including what the Honorable John Lewis called getting into good trouble, necessary trouble. And the affirmation is, I am empowered by my awareness of and commitment to our collective greater good. So let's let that sink in for a moment. There was a lot in there. <laughs> and take a breath. And I'm going to see the, say this opening affirmative prayer in the first person. And because we're all one, it really is a prayer for all of us if it's something that you are in tune with. I know that there is one divine intelligence in the universe. It powers everything. It created everything. I am part of that. It's part of me. I am the substance of that divine intelligence, just as each one of us is, just as each one of our historical black figures are and were. I know that this divine intelligence powers us to go through very troubling times with courage and grace and love and compassion and perseverance. And that whatever we endeavor to do, whatever vision we have, we can achieve it. It's dem it was demonstrated over and over by the enslaved people. It's demonstrated to today in all around the world with oppressed people. And so I know that I have that same courage, that same perseverance. All I need to do is act on it. 
in a way that I'm guided by. And so I'm grateful for this knowing. I'm grateful to the center and to Tim's messages, which have led me to understand this. I'm grateful to Don, our musician. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> hey, 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 whatever he said. And, <laughs> and um, the Reiki practitioners, the, ho the um, hospitality people who do so much work to feed us every Sunday. And please show your appreciation to them. I'm grateful for all of this. The practitioners who say prayers for us any time we're looking for them to support us in our spiritual journey. I'm grateful for all of this, and I release it with joy in knowing that it's already manifesting, and together we say, and, and so, so it is. is. And just as a reminder, after service in a loop is a three-minute sli slideshow. If you want to see a real demonstration of the courage and perseverance and faith that black people had in 19, spring of 1964 right here in St. Augustine, you'll see what the work that they did to bring forth the Civil Rights Act. So I invite you to come after service. It'll be in a loop. Just do your hospitality thing, talk and whatever, mm -hmm. and just come in whenever you can to watch the, the video. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brenda. So my talk this morning is entitled, What We Believe. After service at 1130, we're going to start a class called the Essential Earnest Homes. And that class starts with a uh, series of statements he makes. He uh, first made them in the Science of Mind textbook in 1927, almost 100 years ago. And it's his beliefs. Now, you notice he says this is what we believe, but it doesn't mean that you have to believe that. We give you perfect uh, uh, opportunity to make that decision for yourself, to figure out for yourself a God of your understanding. It's one that you can believe in. My teacher said one that won't insult your intelligence and one that you can put to work in your life because ultimately that's what you're here to do. You're here to put this power for good, this power for love, health and prosperity to work in your life. And so you want to have beliefs that you can that you can have faith in and move forward uh, on. Now, one of the ones that uh, he used that I really like is, is we believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, the eternal loving give, givingness of life to all, to all. We can have an exp ex expectation that life is going to work out for us, that life is trying to teach us how to work with it, and it's mine to see where does life want to flow because it wants to flow towards that which is more loving, more joyful, more prosperous. So it's mine to, to find out where are those streams of energy in my life? How can I attach my hopes and dreams to those currents? Because we can either be like boats against the currents. Patti LaBelle had a song entitled that. Or we can be row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Choice is ours. And if we choose to go gently down the stream, our rowing will only empower us more. And it'll make the journey easier, quicker. When you're trying to go up, up current, you're using all your energy and you're battling what's coming for, for you. So we want to make sure we're going with the flow of life. Now, I, I have to remind myself all, all the time of that, of what is it that wants to work through me? How is it that I can uh, uh, allow the flow of life to flow easier, to make things easier for myself and for those around me and for the world? Now, one thing you may not know about me, you may have never realized about me, I'll share with you a little private thing this morning. I know it will go no further, just between you and I. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here it is. Here it is. We got a photo. Now, brace yourself for this photo. It may be alarming to some people, so brace yourself. But I live with a terrorist. <laughs> Do not let that cute face fool you. <laughs> she is a terrorist who can, in a millisecond, morph from this cute little puppy into a Tasmanian devil. And she will go at a squirrel, a cat, 
or her mortal enemy, the leaf blower. The leaf blower. And she can go from zero to 60 in milliseconds. And if you're not careful, if you're not ready, she'll tear off the leash. She'll, you'll, she'll go so fast you, you lose control of the leash. Well, we can't have that. Can't have her out because she's so tiny. You can't have her out running around without control. So I, I did my research on how to, how to walk dogs. Very interesting. Uh, how to really train dogs to walk. It's very interesting because they say most humans, we want to train the dog through our, uh, our voice. We want to give them commands, and then we want to show them behavior. We ignore the thing that they most take in information from. We, don't, we ignore that altogether, and that's smell. They mainly learn through smell. Dogs, smell is the dominant uh, uh, income of information for dogs. So you've got to work with smell if, to, to make it easier for them. They also have huge, huge antennas for our emotions. They pick up our emotions. So if you're out walking the dog and you're nervous about somebody getting a leaf blower out of the garage, they're soaking in that, that stress and frustration. And what do they do? They're even more vigilant about looking for the next leaf blower or squirrel or cat. Yeah. So one of the mo most interesting uh, suggestions they said was, for the human, enjoy your walk. That's the first thing you're supposed to do. You've got to give out that energy. I'm out here having, I'm out here having fun. The dogs really like to walk. Sophie, if I will let her, she likes to tote the leash in her mouth. So I let her do that because I think it's giving her more control. Uh, another piece of advice they said is uh, take up some treats, hold them in your hand, hold them down by your hand, and the dog will naturally walk towards the treats. Well, between my hand and where Sophie walks is a long distance, and so that wasn't so, so working so well. So finally, I had this idea. This idea came to me, a flash of genius, some would say, and that was to put a, a, put a treat in my sock, to hide a treat in my sock. Yeah, it works like a charm. <laughs> She's right there at it. Now, the, the, ch the challenge will be always making sure I dump the treat before I wash the sock. So if I come here one morning and I'm smelling like pepperoni pup, you're going to know what, what's happened. <laughs> now, where did that idea come from? I don't know from training a dog. I don't know anything about training a dog. Where did that idea come from? It came from spirit. It came from spirit. If you find yourself, if you're doing something repetitive, washing dishes, folding laundry, washing the car, doing gardening, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, there comes a boat, bolt of an idea to you that you hadn't been thinking of. It just came from nowhere. That's an idea from spirit. And be sure to nurture it. Doesn't mean you have to jump up and go do it. Just nurture it a little bit. Give it some attention. Give it some room to take root. If it takes root, what happens is you'll start seeing signs and signals. People will start talking to you about it. You'll see a TV program. You'll see a flyer out somewhere uh, about the topic. Spirit will give you breadcrumbs that you can follow uh, your way. Giving us a better idea about ourselves is the way spirit best communicates to us our best ideas. I know we all want to be walking along the beach and all of a sudden a voice from the heavens come out and say, you know, I'm God, do this, that, or the other thing. But if that were to happen, you would be running up and down that beach like Bugs Bunny. I mean, you can't have that kind of dramatic breakthrough, cosmic breakthrough, and then go back living a normal, regular life. So the easiest way we get communion from spirit is through our best ideas. And God wants life to work for you. It has no interest, no interest in seeing you struggle and suffer. Why would a loving parent ever want its child to struggle and suffer? It really wants to see how well we can do with the opportunities provided for us. 
And there's more opportunities. The more we can take advantage of it, the more we can work with them, the more opportunities will flow our way. And the, that which we can take advantage of will go on to another outlet. So we want to be open to the best opportunities. And that's what I had to do with Sophie. I had to shift my, uh, how I was communicating with her to get something more uh, uh, functional, to get, to get a working solution. And I realized that's exactly what we have to do with spirit too. Spirit communes through our best ideas. And for most of us, I'll speak for myself, you know, for a long time before I came to this teaching, when I came from traditional teaching, when I thought of God, I thought it was just a place I could just go and dump all my problems to and have all of that work out for me. You know, I could just go dump all my problems, and it was going to sort them all out for me. But that's not how God participates in our life, because if it did that, then we would learn nothing from life. We would stay at our same level. It's here encouraging us to do the best we can, and it's there helping us so we can learn how to work with God, how to work with life, and how to use our emotions to, to, to bring something beneficial about. When we go to spirit begging and pleading and talking about how worthless we are and how miserable we are, do you think spirit's going to waste a great idea on that consciousness? And even if it did in that mindset, we wouldn't even recognize it. We're too infatuated with our pain and our woes uh, for us to be able to lift our eyes to a better knowing for ourselves. And we want to go to spirit in high expectation. In Scripture, it says the, the, the trumpeters were sent out uh, before the enemy. The trumpeters, they sent the musicians out not to beg for the goodness of life, but to proclaim it right where we are right as we are, and then to look for and acknowledge uh, because what we look for, what we acknowledge, what we give energy to grows and thrives. There's a Sufi poet that said, love is my religion. Wherever love's camel takes me, that is my religion and that is my path. Dr. Holmes says, we see the incarnation of spirit in all people and all incarnations are from the one God. So we're here to treat each other like that. We're here to be open to the goodness of spirit when it shows up from whatever source. I don't know if you heard this week or not, but uh, there's a news story that got out that uh, a really famous musician, Beyonce, had put out a country music song. And the country music radio stations didn't want to play it because they didn't think Beyonce looked like, you know, somebody who should be singing country music. I think she looks like somebody who should be singing anything she wants to, and she's got enough money <laughs> to sing anything she wants, and look good at it, by the way. Uh, so eventually, her fans were letting them know that they would appreciate them playing her album. It's got, it got on the, the radio stations. Well, that's a good thing. What I was remembering about was that a long time ago, they had been another African-American female group that actually won uh, Entertainer of the Year in 1974. And that was the Pointer Sisters. And the Pointer Sisters uh, made country music a uh, release of the year from a song called uh, Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale. One of them, of uh, the four sisters, it was Anita. Uh, she had fell in love with this guy, madly in love. He came back to her and he told her he was not only married, but his wife was pregnant. And she sat down and she wrote this song, Fairy Tale. And she took it to the sisters. They were recording a double album in San Francisco, a double album, mind you. And so she took it to her sisters, um, and they looked it over, and they said, well, this is a country music song. This is somebody's done somebody wrong. This is a country music song. And they, were happy. they wanted to do it. But the producers and the musicians, because they were in San Francisco, they had a bunch of deadheads, you know, musty, dusty hippies in there trying to <laughs> play... <laughs> And they were like, this is a country music song. We don't want to play this. Well, the manager told them, said, well, we'll go to Nashville. They know how to play country music. We'll go to Nashville. So that's what they did. Got to Nashville. Uh, the, the cut only got on this double album because they needed one more song. And this was the last one they put on. The rest of the album is jazz, it's blues, it's all kinds. They were very, very talented women. So they hit the road. And, you know, back in 1974, if you were on the road, 
We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have internet. You could just be out in the country and not knowing what's going on. Well, that's what was happening to them. Uh, and one, at one point, they got word that they one of the album was up for a Grammy. The next little city they got to, they got word that the country music hit had gotten out to the country music radio stations. It was going through the charts, and they, the Grand Ole Opry wanted them to come to perform it. So they headed out to the uh, Grand Ole Opry. Now, there was just a couple of problems there. <laughs> One of them, their picture had not gone out to the single with the country music radio stations. The Grand Ole Opry didn't know there were some black women coming to, to perform. They also, because they were so, uh, they, they didn't have any money when they started, uh, they didn't have costumes. They went to Goodwill and secondhand stores and bought vintage clothes to wear. That was their stage costumes. So they got to the uh, Country Muse Grand Ole Opry. They showed up. They said, we're here for our jobs. They took them down to the kitchen. They thought they were there to work in the kitchen. They were hysterical about it. They thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Now, they had a perfect opportunity to be upset and, and, and insulted, because it was in ways insulting. But they did not. And they got on that stage, and so they said when they walked out on that stage, you could hear a pin drop. And she says, they got out on that stage. She said, the first time it was uh, 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 not Anita, uh, Bonnie was the lead singer on it. She said, first she first opened her mouth. She said, that crowd was with them. And said, they kept clapping the whole way through the song. And she said, when they were after the, the uh, song, when they were meeting, she, people were just pouring up to them. Now, here's the thing. They were, they, were, they were church. They had been raised up in the church. And so they were on this tour. They were going to all these bars and places that they weren't comfortable with. They had never been around that kind of drinking and smoking, that kind of stuff. Here they were at the Grand Ole Opry. There was none of that there. And people were so appreciative and glad and happy for them. They, she, Bonnie said, they fell in love with us. When we open ourselves up to just see the Spirit of God in each and every one of us, to know that within every one of us, there's a spark of the divine. When we're going to be able to do that, we're going to be able to just leapfrog over so much of the issues that we have going on. And we're going to find such inventions and such, such talents and such uh, coming together and solve so many huge problems. We have this infinite potential with uh, in us. Uh, they says it's a sleeping giant. We have yet to wake it up. It's a, see, it's a sleeping potential. We have the ability to rise up and to do so many great things. Rumi, the a Sufi poet, he says, the breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. The breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. And the secrets that the breeze of dawn has to tell you is that you're wonderful. You're amazing. You have been called by name from stardust by the voice of God to be exactly where you are here today. And you have mighty and wonderful work to do. And you're going to do it through God's love. You're going to do it through God's joy. You're going to do it knowing who you are and whose you are. You are a child from the Most High. You're here to do wonderful and glorious and amazing great things. And you're well on your way to do it. Spirit is proud of you. Your father, your mother in heaven adores you. And it is raining down blessing upon blessing for you to step up and to be the best you can be. This is the truth in your life this morning. It's the truth in mine. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Gets me going every time. <laughs> well, take my lead, huh? This is one we all know. I see trees green 
red roses too I see them bloom for me and you And I think to myself What a wonderful world I see skies of blue And clouds of white The bright blessed day And the dark sacred night and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of a rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people walking by. I see friends shaking hands Saying, how do you do? Ooh, they're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry and I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Colors of a rainbow so pretty in the sky Are also on the faces of people going by I see friends shaking hands They say, how do you do? You know they're really saying I love you I hear babies cry and I watch them grow. They'll know much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, self, what a wonderful world. Oh, you gotta think to yourself, what a wonderful world. Oh, that was wonderful, Don. That was great. <laughs> Thank you for that. So now we come to the time we support our center and we support this place because it is doing really amazing and great and good stuff. Now, you can support us in a couple of ways. One, you can do prayer work for us, just seeing this place full, just seeing all kinds of opportunities show up for us. Uh, you can also do us volunteer work for us. We're very appreciative of that. And the third way, of course, you can support us financially. However you choose to support us, know that it's going to be returned to you in a, an abundance. So if you will, take your intention, place over your heart, and read with me this affirmation of prosperity. I live in a universe of abundance as I freely and joyfully give. I join in the divine flow, and all I share with life returns to me multiplied abundance. Well, thank you in advance for your contributions, and uh, the ushers have stepped down. Don, I know you got something great. This is different. <laughs> it's a song written by a guy named Taylor Goldsmith. And uh, in some way it applies, mainly by location. Cherry gum would cover up the cigarettes we smoked. The seven up would balance out the beer. Mom would make us dinner, and we'd all try not to choke. Dad was working later every year. 
Oh, we'd count the trucks on Highway 1 on their way to Jacksonville. Wondering where they headed on from there. My brothers and my sisters all stood spiritually still. As if those roads became the answer to their prayer. But I didn't want it any other way. This town was the one thing that felt right. All these tourists could be kings throughout the day, but not in St. Augustine at night. I was working at the bait shack, supplying all the fishing tours. Pretty soon, I was chartering a boat. My dad said I needed dumb luck and a secret stash of Coors if I stood a chance of keeping things afloat. That's when my girlfriend told me there's a baby on the way and I need to know you're gonna go to bat. I never put off till tomorrow things I should have done today. No, I always waited way longer than that. I never had much to say of how I felt. I've been guided by my barroom appetites. So if this world belongs to everybody else, just leave me St. Augustine at night. The Lord must really love us common folk Cause he made us oh so much. Now if he'd just point the way to go If he could just start speaking up Our oldest brother left this world for leading one too many lives. I guess he finally settled for none at all. The rest of us just grew apart and blamed our husbands and our wives when anybody asked why they don't call. Life became a series of birthdays, cars and pets, about anything to look forward to I don't talk about mistakes I don't talk about regrets at this point I don't see what good it would do and I ain't asking for anybody's help as I gaze out where the stars dance with the lights if I'm not sure of how I feel about myself, oh, I've still got St. Augustine at night. I've still got St. Augustine at night. Nice. 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 Very nice. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Diana. And thank you for your support, your contributions. It's helping us grow and thrive to continue to be this beacon of light and love and compassion. So we're doing your part, you're doing uh, yours, and together we're making a difference. So we thank you, we bless it, we release it, knowing it does its good and perfect work, returning to us multiplied abundantly. And together we say, and so it is. Well, I'm going to close the service by doing an affirmative prayer. I'm going to do it in the first person, but take it in for yourself. If I say something that works for you, hold tight to that. If I say something that doesn't work for you, just let that part slide by. But just know this truth with me this morning. There is but one God and one mind and one power. That power is perfect love. It's divine intelligence. That power created me from itself plus nothing else. I'm not all of God, but all that I am is God. And I'm here in the physical plane so that I can be a channel for God's love and kindness and compassion. And I am here to rain down blessings upon myself and upon my, my friends and family and the world. Spirit and I have amazing and good work to do. 
We are here to lift up our eyes to know a better, greater truth for ourselves, that there is a power for love in the world that's dynamic, bold, and can bring about a better day. So this morning, in this wonderful place full of all these wonderful, loving people, I now choose to know a better idea for myself. I choose to see a world where compassion flows like milk and honey, where the soldiers drop their weapons and go back to their home, where men and women are treated like brothers and sisters of one family, of one God and one mind, where together we bring in and birth a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem. This is what God is calling me on, and this morning I am saying, yes to it all. And I am not holding back. I am dropping my burdens. I'm dropping my limitations. I'm lifting my eyes to a greater knowing, and I am on the move. This is my truth. Every cell of my being radiates this right knowing, and I release this prayer into the mind of God to do its good and perfect, bold and dynamic work, returning to me multiplied abundantly. And together we say, and so it is. All right, I'm going to leave you with one last idea, and that is your life. Your life, it's not a problem to be solved. It's a miracle unfolding. Your job this week is to go name your miracle, proclaim your miracle, and make it your own. God bless us all. Now let us go be the miracle Spirit is calling us to be. Until we see each other again, this is Reverend Ken wishing you many blessings. Think of your fellow man. Lend him a helping hand. Put a little love in your heart. You see it's getting late. Oh, please don't hesitate. Put a little love in your heart. And the world will be a better place. And the world will be a better place for you and me. You just wait and see I put a little love in your heart to put a little love in your heart you gotta put a little love in your heart another day goes by and still the children cry put a little love in your heart if you want the world to know we won't let hatred show put a little love in your heart hey and the world will be a better place yeah the world will be a better place for you and me you just wait and see Come on and put a little love in your heart. You've got to put a little love in your heart. Oh, we're going to put a little love in your heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What you going to do? Take a good look around, man, if you're looking down, put a little love in your heart. I hope you will decide that kindness will be your guide. Put a little love in your heart one time, because the world will be a better place. Yeah, the world will be a better place for you and me. You just wait and see all wait and see put a little love in your heart we're gonna put a little love in your heart mm, man put a little love in your heart believe me put a little love in your heart